it's recording. <laughs> Hi. So today we're going to do <laughs> we're going to do a project on how to free up a Kenmore machine. Okay. I have Windex. I don't want to hear it. I have sewing machine oil. Any sewing machine oil will do. Screwdrivers. One smaller, one bigger. And a Phillips. This is a wool. Um, what's it called? Um, what the hell is that called? Um, I forgot what it's called. But it's that metal wool stuff. You can get at Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere. A little abrasive sponge. A towel to clean up your disgusting hands. And a very filthy. <clears throat> oh, oh, sorry. My apologies. Um, grease. This. A very filthy. Very sad. And very spider infested. Can more. No spiders were harmed in this. I actually did release some in the wild. Okay, so you can see. I'm actually using a stand for the first time in my life. Okay, so. This might, I, mean, I don't know how long this video is actually gonna take because I have no idea what's inside this machine. I have not opened it. I bought it like this. Um, so if I move the wheel, it's really, really tight. And I don't want to mess with that. Actually, look, it's not even, well, let's see. Yeah, the needle is actually not even moving at all. Um, let me, see, I'm very new to tech, not tech, but like, you know, devices and gadgets and stuff. So I'm attached this to my hutch cabinet and it may fall off, so I do apologize. Okay, so, wow, okay. The foot does not, oh, there it goes, okay. Doesn't want to come up. All right, so. I'm taking it that this was done sometime in the 70s, as you could see by the lovely pattern here. Okay, first thing I do, just, oh, and you also want to, I never plug my machines in first. I don't want to get electrocuted and die, so I'm going to unplug this. And that's what you want to do. Unplug it, check your cord. That was the first thing that you want to do. What I always do with my cord, I just spray some Windex because it's always oily and disgusting. And that's why you want to make sure it's not plugged in because you don't want to get moisture on it. And you just check as you're cleaning. Make sure you have no rips in your cord. Okay, so that's what I always do first. Because, you know, I don't really have a death wish. Hold on. Sorry. I just have to bear with me in my newfound fancy gadget. I'm also making fish simultaneously, so I may have to get up and, you know, switch it. The cord actually looks really good. The pedal does not look very good, but, um, you know, it's going to be fine. We're going to figure that out. I do like to sometimes replace them. I keep the old ones for testing and, you know, replace them with better ones for anybody on the sell the machine to. But yeah, so far so good. Our cord is actually not all hardened and that's really nice. And uh, it's actually in pretty good condition. And now it is clean, look at that. That's disgusting. This was in somebody's attic. I hope I don't like open this and like a mouse runs out of here, but I'm sure it would have disappeared by now. Okay. All right, so our cord is luckily in good shape. Um, and I'm gonna clean this off just a bit. And just see how bad it is. And just, you know, it's rusty, but it's really not that bad. The problem with these is that these came out of a cabinet, so you've got the underside exposed. Obviously, you want to remove any spiders, spider webs, anything like that. Um, but yeah, the, when they come out of a cabinet, the bottom is open, so I have to either close it somehow 
which I don't have any extra pieces to close it. So I would just end up replacing the pedal ultimately. And we can, it's really easy, honestly. Like if you just look inside it, you can see this cord. This is two wires and they just split. One goes right here, one goes right here. So you loosen it and tighten it back up. You don't actually have to have those little connectors right there. You can literally just wrap it and tighten it. Um, it's, it's really easy. So at least, you know, that's easy. Okay. So now let's examine our situation. So I am going to just clean up this machine. I don't like to touch grimy things all the time. As you can see, I'm out of Windex because I use a lot of it. But you know, it cuts through old grease and stuff really well. Um, and yes, it does have ammonia in it. And ammonia is corrosive, but we're not leaving it on the machines. We're using it to wipe things up. Look at this. It's disgusting. It is a little satisfying though, honestly. So, I already have, you know, kind of spotted several issues that I know this machine is going to have. But, um, we'll just get to them one at a time, I guess. Okay. I'm not going to, like, clean it thoroughly. That's, you know, not for a video. Obviously, you guys know how to clean things, I'm sure. Okay. It's so gross. But I just want to, you know, get the material. Oh my god, she's in the back. Let me show you the back. Can you see that? It's like, yeah. It's pretty filthy. It's seen lovelier days. Look at that. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's satisfying. And uh, what I do use after I'm done with all this and I have something really stained. If you have stickers on it, by the way, um, some stickers, they act like they're permanent. What you would do, this is my wonderful trick, is I take a towel and I kind of soak it with WD-40. WD-40 will remove paint um, off of like pants and things like that, but it also is really, really good at removing stickers. So if just spraying it and then rubbing it, it does not come off, soak a towel and put it right over the sticker or not a towel i mean like um look how gross that is isn't that funny a um paper towel so soak in wd-40 and just cover the sticker completely and then leave that overnight and the next day just come back and use a magic eraser to rub it off and it works like magic um like really old duct tape you know remnants That is tolerable now. I don't have to stare at it and feel pity. And obviously, I'm going to clean it up really well. And after I clean my machines, I always oil them up to make sure that I don't have any residue left over of anything else. And that it's nice and shiny and, you know, well oiled. And it preserves the paint also. Okay, so here we go. So first things first, let's take out the top. Let's see. I'm going to check on my fish in a minute. So there's two screws up here. Pretty simple. Most machines have two screws on top. Sometimes you'll find them that have um, three screws. Mostly I found that it's two. One. And. Oh, and you want a little bowl here. I'll take this. Oh, there's stuff in there already from my last project. Okay, I'll just take this lid right here. find in here is really old grease. Alright. Wow, top is actually really clean. The tire is cracked. So you want to take this tire off. It's kind of fused on there. And it doesn't appear that this machine was so used because this tire looks like it was brand new. It's just been sitting and this is what happens with you know old rubber. So it's trash and it needs to be replaced. The mechanism itself, it's supposed to pop in and out. 
and there it goes. It is very much kind of stuck. Now it's unstuck. So I'm definitely going to oil back here and get it going again. So it's in good shape. Oh, by the way, I forgot somebody mentioned my humming. I do sing all the time. I have ADHD. If nobody's figured it out by now. So I am constantly have like just chaos going on in my brain. And I hum every time there's three seconds of silence. It's not because I'm trying to grace you with my incredible voice. <laughs> it's because I, I don't know how to shut up. Um, okay, so here we go. This up so you can see the underside. This is not working. Bear with me as I take my lovely fancy device. <laughs> okay. All right. I think this is how. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. That's kind of cool. Okay. All right. So we're going to look inside this and we're going to see what is going on. So it is really really stiff and it's not actually turning the um the needle so you don't want luckily this machine is 99.9 percent .9 metal this part does not oh this one actually is turning shockingly if it doesn't turn you don't want to force it so you just wait it out okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take our dropper of oil I can actually find it. Of course, I can't. I can't find it because why would you be able to find something you actually need around here? Um, sorry, low power mode. Okay, that's fine. That's, I'm just going to literally dip this in here and drop it. And what I'm doing is I'm dropping it on every moving part. And you know what? At this point, when a machine has sat for probably the last 30 years, you're not worried about over-oiling it. Unless you have plastic parts and nylon parts. I'm not going to be oiling this thing right here. Um, this can. I'm going to be oiling all of the metal. And everywhere where you see a little hole. Um, let me give you a good example. There's not many here, but on the bottom I'll show you. Um, that's kind of where you stick your dropper in. And you really want to get in there because that actually goes inside the mechanism. So I'm just dropping oil everywhere where I see a moving part, where a part should be moving that is. Right here is an example of a little hole. Um, let me see if I can bring this camera right there. Can you see that? It's just a little tiny hole and that basically is, is the machine. Oh, there's one right here too. I just filled that up. It actually doesn't even penetrate because it's so dried up in there. So that's kind of what happens with the machines over the years. All right. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. The next thing I'm going to do after I get this all done, and I really do need quite a bit of oil. See, this one works. <clears throat> so that's good. So see, if I'm moving my wheel, you can see what's, it's just barely wiggling. So I'm just gonna oil everything on top. Drop it all the way through, it doesn't matter. All you wanna make sure to avoid, because these machines do have a house motor, you want to make sure that you're avoiding the motor over here, but the motor does have a cap, so it's not like you're gonna flood the motor or anything. Just, you know, something to consider when you're pouring oil in there. Don't be like, just don't take the bottle and go like this. Although in all fairness, I've practically done that. Um, if you get to the point where you can't use it up, it's just so bad, um, try WD-40. I know, I know, WD-40, it clogs it up after time, it dries up. Yeah, it does, but to free the machine, WD-40 is amazing. Afterwards, once you get the machine moving again, I think actually, oh, look, look at that. 
I just gave, okay, so what I did is I gave this a little push, and what I do is I kind of force the mechanism to move gently, but I do not force it so hard, so we have a little bit of movement here. It's not, it's not going back and forth enough for me to call it movement, but this part obviously. So any part that you know moves and you know how it moves, that is the part that you can gently force as you're turning the wheel. Don't go pushing things that you don't know, but we all know that this part of the machine is supposed to move up and down as the hand wheel moves, so you can kind of gently guide it and see if you can get that to move. Okay, the other thing that we do know is that this machine is a zigzag. Once we get in the zigzag position, we have to move the needle. This needle is not moving. So that's another thing that we know. The other thing we know, let's see what else. Well, for now, I'm just gonna finish oiling. Hold on, I've got a little more to go. I do do behind the hand wheel. And this machine does have a housed um, belt also. So it is possible, possible that our belt is broken. So we're gonna get into all that. Now that I've got all this going, okay. all right, that's freed up, not freed up, I'm sorry, that's oiled enough, okay. Pardon me while I go change the fish, I'm sorry. It's an air fryer, I don't want to be too Sorry, I had to test the fish. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Air fryer is amazing. Alright. So, we're moving only this much. It doesn't go in a full rotation. Yeah, it slips. Okay. Now, we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Flip it. Okay. Check this out. Here we go. Um, also, check out your bobbin. All right, so we're going to check out several things. I see a loose screw here. I'm starting to get concerned. I may have a broken gear. Mm. No, it's not loose. It's just not properly put in. Okay, so this right here is your um, grease box. This grease box needs to be opened. So this is our bottom care. And I'll show you how to also free up some other things. Um, how to free up your teeth. This machine's pretty simple. This doesn't have like housing on the bottom. It's really nice. But um, some other machines are a lot more complicated. <coughs> I wish I had better light. <clears throat> okay. One, two, this one missing here. So when you get your machine service, <coughs> grease box is supposed to be full. I see this literally all the time. It's like, what is that supposed to do for you? All right, anyway, that's your old grease. Um, so in here, oh, that's, I like this little device. In here you have your um, drive gears <clears throat> and they look, well they're metal and so whoever did the service on this, what they did was they added newer orange grease but they did not take out this garbage. So yeah, 
this is what services become nowadays. It's crazy to me. Like, and they charge so much. I remember when I used to have plastic machines and I'd bring them in and it was like $75. Well, this is in LA. LA is really expensive. It's like $75 to check it and then we'll let you know. Um, this little gear, this little thing is, it's like the little, um, what's that called? I can't remember. It's like, a, not like a washer, but anyway, it, it helps keep it from seeping out. Oftentimes it's really deteriorated, so be gentle with it if you want to keep it. Um, so yeah, this has basically no grease on it, but the gear itself looks fine, I think. Okay. All right. So let's move on to oiling. I am going to oil by the hook. Oh, and you also want to remove the hook housing. You want to remove all these because if anything is jammed, it could very well be in this. So you don't want that to be the case. That's kind of an easy fix, you know, if there's a thread in there. So just remove that first before you start freaking out and trying to oil the bejesus out of it. Okay, here's one of those little holes I was talking about. So I would drop oil into that little hole as much as I could. And normally I have, you know, a normal oiler that has like a little, a little, um, thingamajiggy that reaches into those crevices. But, you know, biggest can't be choosers. And I really don't have time to go over into the shed. Okay, this right here, I don't know what this is called. I call this a little bullet. You see this? Excuse me. So, right up here, we have our and make this visible. Sorry. This is what changes our what causes our teeth to move. This does not move. See that? It does. Oh, there it goes. So you can force it. Nothing's gonna happen. It's metal. But if you cannot force it, here is the part that it is. It is this right here. So what you want to do, if it's not moving, you basically as you are pushing your lever you push this back and oftentimes it's just so packed in there with old grease and it's completely glued that it just needs a little bit of a wedge so once that's moving you're good it doesn't like on stop it doesn't stop moving after that okay a little bit there all right that down here Okay, so here is our motor. Our motor obviously is going to need to be serviced. Okay. There's a little bit right there. And also this bar in there. That bar is what moves your teeth. You want to properly oil that too. Just oil everything. If it's a metal gear machine, oil everything. It doesn't matter. Nothing's going to happen to it. Just don't flood the motor. Okay. All right, let's see. It's still not moving, so my my bet is somewhere on the motor. So, ah, let's do this again. We're gonna flip it now. Now we're going to remove all this. Okay. <laughs> Here, screwdrivers, little one, to get this little guy off. Guy, and then this just unscrews. Okay, and then there is this that's going to stop it. And we'll get our belt off. Okay, now this one has a house belt, like I said. It's in, oops, it's inside. So to get to it, we need to remove the cover. Am I too low? I'm too low. Is that better? That's better. Okay. So if you have little washers, don't lose them. Got this one right here. Okay. And there, oh, there it goes, it pops off. Some of them are harder to get off, some are easier. This little washer is like stuck on there. I'm just gonna leave them there. Okay, just pops on and off like this, okay? And now you have, the belt is in there, this one. Let me show you what we're looking at. This is our belt. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate the belt 
and just to make sure that the pulley on my motor is actually working, which it is. Oh, ew, ew, okay. Yeah, there was a mouse in here. Do you see that? That's mouse poop. Okay, this has to all come off now. That's so gross. See, I told you, I told you. There's gonna be, well, not a mouse in here, but it's practically a mouse, okay. So, to get this off, I can do one of two things. I could, I believe I could just pull, yeah, this one I could just pull off. A lot of the Kenmores have two belts, so the easiest way that I've learned to get them off with, well, I guess I'll have to do a separate tutorial with, with the two belt one, but I rotate the belt until I pop, I mean the wheel until I pop the belt off, which is kind of like, um, but this one's easy because it's a one belt. So, all right. Well, that's just lovely. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out what in here is not moving. First, let's clean that up. I just, I just don't get it. Well, I guess because the machine was laying down um, in a cabinet. Okay. Now, well, also this gives you good access to oil those little bits right there. People should wear gloves when doing this. I'm not one of those people. going to find the problem in a jiffy. I hope it's a jiffy. Sometimes it takes forever. Sometimes you have no idea what the problem is. And then sometimes you're like, oh, hey, no big deal. There it is, you know? So let's see. All right. So if it's not our belt, which clearly it's not, uh, let's just rotate this now. Nope. And it's getting jammed in the uptake position. So what I usually like to do on any of my machines, even old singers, you kind of rock back and forth. And you try to find where, kind of feel. I feel like it's, I feel like it's, I really do. You kind of can feel where the machine is resisting. Okay. Oh, I've also heard the whole blow dryer trick thing. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. Can you use a blow dryer? Yeah, I've actually used an open torch before on an all metal machine where the gears were fused shut. So yeah, you, you can. Um, my concern is that the people are using this a lot on machines that have plastic on them. Like I would not touch this machine with a blow dryer because we have this part. Um, well, I mean, we have these, obviously, but, shoot, and there's another one right here. So this, this one that drives this is, uh, is a plastic one. So we have a couple plastic pieces on here. I would not risk losing them, you know what I mean? Okay, there we go. This is nice. This is starting to move really good. Just a little bit of oil. All right. So now let's get it. So I feel like the resistance is coming from right here. Right there. So I'm just going to push the machine to make a full circle very gently and slowly. And I do that by just doing rocking back and forth motions. Okay. Yeah, I'm feeling like the resistance is right here. It's so thirsty. It's like I'm dripping into those little holes I told you about. And it's just sucking it in. And some of them, like... Machines have personalities, too. They have lives. They have stories. And not like us, obviously. They're not organic. But they do have stories. I feel like you can feel when the machine you loved and when it just never got the satisfaction it needed to get, you know what I mean? Okay. And as you're doing it, you wanna always look inside 
to see are you missing anything is there a broken gear somewhere i believe that this does not have any metal any plastic gears but i could be wrong so here we go so i'm trying to do a full rotation very very slowly there it goes okay that was one full rotation and that did take some effort. There it goes, look. Second rotation takes a lot less effort. And this is how we do it. So we're gonna free her up real slow. Look at that, now she's going. So yeah, I definitely feel the resistance is here. So this is actually where I did an open torch before, where it was just so gummed that um, I took, well, I took the part out and I literally just heated the whole part up because it was so bad. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to figure out how to get her to zigzag again. So we're gonna keep, no, normally, I'm obviously gonna keep working on this and this is gonna take me a long time to get her really into this position to where I'm comfortable with the way that she's sewing. Um, I also am going to put her back to straight stitch because I see that she's actually on zigzag right now. Um, hold on. There we go. Okay. There. Let me take the foot off because this is not a zigzag foot and we want to test her zigzag capabilities. There's no zigzag foot that came with this baby, but it did come with a manual. Isn't that funny? we're gonna keep going all right that's always nice to see when it starts to really free up it feels good nice okay so you can okay so here's another thing you see how that drop is happening that's because we have one part is so gummed and the other part is moving freely that it basically it's not doing the full smooth rotation so anytime you have something like that you know that it's it's in that area so just keep going keep working on it it's gonna get there you're gonna need a lot of oil you're gonna need a lot of time but once you get her freed up and once you get her freed up enough to where she is actually moving um, and a lot of times I do take these fully apart just to really clean it out. But she is actually incredibly clean. It was not used and it was not loved. It was just, honestly, if you look at her, like, look, there's no scuff marks even. She wasn't used. She just, somebody bought her and that was it. So sad. I love machines so much. Okay, see, a little more oil and she's starting to move really good. Once you get her to a position where you're not forcing it so much and it's kind of an easier um, movement, you'll be able to use the motor to get her going and you're going to need to run her and add oil and then run her for about three minutes and then add oil again and keep doing it to really warm up the whole mechanism. Okay, so that's good. So now what we want to do is we want to free up our zigzag. So let's figure out what position we're in right now. Um, okay, we are in straight, I think. Okay, so you do wanna be doing this in the straight stitch. Okay, so now I believe if I go this way on this one, let me see. I think that should activate my zigzag stitch. Oh wait, no, maybe this is what I it's my zigzag stitch one two three yeah width hold on and then this is my length my length seems to be moving really well reverse it was moving well and you could see if you look inside you can make you could see what's moving so if you're pushing one of these and nothing's moving inside you have a problem okay so width of button holder why do i need a width of a button holder Oh, I see. Okay. That was me activating my button holder. Now my button holder is down. I should read the manual. I don't actually have this particular model. But don't worry, I'll figure it out. Okay. 
So now what we want to do is we want to free the needle. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to get ourselves into a zigzag position. Let's see, so nothing moves. Yeah, this is supposed to move the whole arm. And it's not moving the whole arm. Okay, honey. This is where I need you to work. All right, come on. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. So every machine is different. But when you get the machine into a zigzag position, and you're going to need to read your manual if you don't know. Mine is obviously in a zigzag position. You can see it, and I have my width up. So, so now I have my width up. Anyway, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to free the needle. And this is kind of the part where it's usually one of the kind of grossest, not grossest, but like most gummed up. So the needle has to be physically freed. So if you have, let me see if I could. This is your arm right here, your needle arm. Oh gosh. I'm trying to change my position now with this weird snake device thingy. Okay. There we go. That works, right? Okay. All right, so here's your arm that is right here is controlling your needle. You have, if you look inside, you can see that there's kind of a, a gap about this big where the needle is supposed to travel when it goes back and forth. You can't, the needle is not traveling because it's stuck. So you want to physically push it. Do you see how I'm pushing it and it's actually moving? And we're going to push it back. There it goes. Do you see that? See what I just did? Watch one more time. In. Out. <clears throat> there it goes. Okay. Now I'm going to oil there. And if I can't get the oil to penetrate, I'll spray it with WD-40 and leave it overnight. Okay. So we're going to do that. Oil, oil, oil. And again. In. Oh, that was so much easier. Did you see that? Did you see how much effort it took me the first time? Da, da, da. And you want to do that a couple times. Beautiful. And inside here, right there, is a little plunger. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. It's supposed to move also with the arm and pop back out every time. So you want to oil is right there, this little plunger. Right there. Can you see that? Right there. This little guy. He needs oil. Okay. I'm trying really hard to make this all visible. Okay. So this is how easy it should be to move. Like this. Da, 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 da. Now. Do you see that? Oh wait. Now when I rotate, when I change this, my needle is actually moving positions. You see that? That's glorious. Okay. Da, da, da. That's cool. So that's how easy it is to free up a needle when the machine is so clogged. And again, you want to push it and you want it to just be able to pop right back out. And that also sometimes helps to just get a Q-tip in there and clean up any of the excess. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to go through all this. In there. We want it to pop back out. Did you see how it didn't want to pop? Look, it's not popping back out, but a little bit of effort. So you have to keep working on that until it does. So you need to get all that grime out of there. Take a small screwdriver, clean it up. So once you push it, clean behind it, push it back out, clean in front of it until you get all that old grease and dirt out of there. Okay. So once it's really freed and everything's moving perfectly, nice and easy, then you know you got it. Okay, now next. All right, we haven't even tested the machine yet. We don't even know if the motor works on this machine. So I'm gonna put my machine in center position. Check, okay. 
everything seems to be moving. I don't know how this button holder works, but it does work because I could see it triggering inside. So we're gonna test all that afterwards. And that's gonna be a separate video, but I do wanna show you how to properly treat it after the fact, after all of it was oiled. And we would let this sit overnight um, to really get in there, you know, in all the crevices and everything. Okay, my needle is moving pretty freely. I'm really happy with all that. I will keep adding oil. Okay. Now, also it's a good idea to remove the face plate in case your needle position is slightly off. You don't want to hit it. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my belt back on. just for the purpose of testing. Um, and we will do a separate video on how to service the motor on this machine. Oh, sorry, you want to do it from this side. My fault, okay. Get it up there and in. Come on. You know what, I'm just gonna go like this. This is the easiest way to do it, watch. So you put this on first. You put this behind and then you roll just the tip, the side of it, like this, on the very side. And then you just roll the wheel and adjust your belt as you're rolling. Don't let the belt twist. My belt just twisted. See how I'm putting it straight and then I just keep rolling slowly and gently until I get it all the way on and it pops on. And that's it. And then you pop this all the way back in, and that's it. Okay, so what we're going to do, just for testing purposes, we'll put this back on. We're not going to put the cover back on, because the cover had to go on first. And we'll just secure that. Okay, so this has to balance in there. Make sure this is all the way in. Get in there. Okay. Do you want this guy back in because he's going to stop it from um, from opening, not from opening, but to, from deactivating the wheel. Okay, so nice and tight. All right, so we're just going to test. Hmm. Okay, hold up. Make sure that it's also on your actual motor pulley. All right, what I'm going to do. I slipped on the motor pulley. So to make it easier for yourself when you're putting the belt on, you can just loosen your actual motor. And if you can get this, I'm done. Okay. Oh, hold on, sorry. Sometimes these screws are so wedged in there that you need a brute. I'm going to use pliers. Which, of course, I don't have on me. I'm not running to the shed right now. Okay. That's fine. We're going to get the motor off later. But that screw removes the motor, so if you can't get it off, use pliers. Alright, let me get this back off again. Because I slipped on the pulley. I want to make sure it's on correctly before I test it. Okay. Come on. Let's go, buddy. Okay. So make sure it's on your little pulley on the bottom first before you try shoving this back on. 
Again, we'll put the side on and we'll just rotate it like this. There we go. That's much easier. All right. So it keeps reminding me. All right, let's plug her in. And let's really gently do a test run. Normally, you want to check the brushes on the motor. Actually, let me check the brushes on the motor. Because I do worry. And they are right here. So you want to just pop that open just to make sure that your brushes are not shot. You don't want to run a motor with no brushes because it's going to just destroy your copper. I suspect, yeah, they're brand new. This machine wasn't used. This machine was just unappreciated. But someone's going to appreciate it, so. <laughs> I knew it. Just knew it. brushes are in good condition you can um, put a little bit of oil on your pulley right here it's just a tiny bit to keep her from squeaking because you do have a fan in there and everything so this does get a little lubrication you also can clean up your housing here your electrical housing just make sure you're not getting it wet or if you do get it wet you can just make sure that you dry it it's dry. You can even wash your motors if you want to take them apart if they're in terrible shape. Um, but you got to leave it on out overnight to make sure that it dries properly. Okay. So let's put her in. Oops, I'm upside down. Can't see here very well. Wow, she's actually really quiet. So I'm gonna let it run. Oh, look at that. That's really quiet. And fast. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let her run like this, and then I'm gonna add oil again. And I'm gonna keep doing that before I do a final cleanup. Then what I'm gonna do. Afterwards, I guess you remember our grease box down here. Um, I got a little bit of oil on my little light, which is not good because my light is can burn out because of that. Okay, there we go. Let me turn this off. Mm -hmm. Let me take the light out and then I'll turn it back on because I really don't want to risk burning out on me right now. Oh, you're one of those. That's just rude. Come on, up, slide. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's starting to burn up. So we're going to need new light later. Okay, so I'm just running it without the light right now. So down here, remember your grease box. You run it for a bit, and then you get all that garbage out of there. Okay, you can spritz a little bit of oil, because that's going to help you get that garbage out to loosen it up. And some machines have way worse than this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, some machines have, like, a ton of old crap in there. So this one is really clean. It just, you know, wasn't used. 
So a little bit of oil. So let's say you have like dark purple or black grease in there. There's some nasty stuff. But again, it's not very bad because it wasn't brown. It usually turns like dark, dark brown when it gets bad. Um, and also they used a lot of, they didn't use synthetic back then. So, you know, that basically just becomes like honey. Um, yeah, so you run it and then clean it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to like destroy the machine or anything. But I like it to be, you know, really good. You want all that out. And then once we're ready, see how well it's amazing. I love it. So once you you're comfortable, see, now we get another piece out because it's loosening it up. So once you're comfortable with how clean it is and your gears are free and everything looks good, I'm gonna run a bit more just to make sure it's all clean in there. You're gonna fill up this whole box. None of this partial nonsense. You want the whole dang box filled, okay? With synthetic grease. You want everything lubricated because that is what's gonna protect and prevent them from overheating. So fill her up. Don't be cheap. Fill her up. You have to like fill every nook and cranny, but you gotta fill it up enough to where as the grease drops from the vibration and the movement, it's not going to just drop out of the gears. And this is so important. <laughs> Had a juki. I still have that juki actually. Um, it's an industrial machine obviously, so it operates incredibly quickly. And it started overheating like crazy and I bought it used. And like when I take out my bobbin, it burns your hand. That's how hot it gets. And it turns out my gearbox was completely empty. My grease box, completely. Like there was nothing in it. And it was basically causing that friction of the metal because it is running like, I don't even know, 6,000 stitches a minute or something like that. I don't even know. Um, it, yeah, it was causing it to just burn up. It was awful. Ultimately, I had a problem and I had to replace the whole shaft. So you want to make sure that you have grease, nice synthetic, bootyful grease. Look at all that. And once you get it in there, rotate your wheel because that's going to eat some of that. Put that back in. See, you got that little gap right there. I'm going to shove a little more in there. Okay, that looks beautiful to me. See the difference between this hard glob and new synthetic film. I didn't even need my wool because the machine was actually really clean inside. Usually you have like, it's yellowed from all the, you know, usage and everything, but not this baby. Mm -hmm, no, I'm backwards, aren't I? I feel like I'm backwards. There we go. Mm. See, that's going to keep them, keep the rest of that grease in there. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> it kind of needs a cap, too. So you're going to put the lid on right here. Okay. Is that correct? Or is that not correct? This one's correct. This one, I think, goes backwards. Yep. Okay. So we're just going to put that part back on. I saw when you take some kind of fish. Um, yeah, I made fish, and I'm also making a video. Oh. It's okay. All right. Anyway, you get the gist. This needs to go in there. So that does get in there. find it? Can't seem to line it up. It's dark as death here. Okay, stay. Where'd it go? Where'd my screw go? Oh, can't catch a break. Okay. 
that one's in. The rest will be easy. Okay, well, once you get that on, the other thing I like to do, let's say this is already set for 24 hours and it's all, you know, lubricated and it's great. I like to just take my finger and I take some oil and I like to lubricate gears. So here you don't really have any gears, so you don't need to worry about that down here. But up here, let's go back up to the top. On the top, we've got some gears all the way in there. You can see them, you know, if you own this machine. I just like to, you know, take a little bit and just shove my finger and just rub it on there. And it's gonna lubricate itself once it starts to rotate. So all gears, and you've got this big one right here. I just like to put a little bit of grease on there. Um, it, it helps, it's better than sewing machine oil when it comes to like really heavily used parts. You also, the other thing is you actually can use grease. I'm sorry. Oh, it's like a little bump. Sorry. Okay. You actually can use it. It is safe for plastic. Unlike sewing machine oil, you don't want to rub it on it, obviously. But you're not so worried, you know, about soaking it or anything like that. Because you'll just wipe it off. So I get it under here. So, um, okay, so that's the start. Um, I'll do a separate video of testing, but now you can see that my, let's do the side view. My machine is now freed. My needle is freely moving back and forth. My wheel is turning super freely. I barely have to even turn. I'm just like, no, 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 no. So that is our goal. Um, I really hope that this one hour long video helped somebody, but um, good luck with your machines.